Okay, so here we are. This is uh, Florida Street. La Calle Florida. It's uh, like a pedestrian street, lots of shops. And this is also the place to exchange money. Now, the thing about Argentina is because of the inflation uh, and the economy, there are multiple exchange rates. And it depends on who you're exchanging with. And you hear people here saying cambiar. And uh, I'm not going to film too many of them because they don't really like to be filmed. But uh, you can hear people calling out. And uh, what they're calling out is exchange, exchange, exchange. And uh, they're calling out that they're going to exchange money for you. And they're going to exchange the money at the blue dollar rate. So what is the blue dollar rate? Well, there are two main exchange rates in Argentina. There is the official government exchange rate, or like the bank rate. So if I were to go to a bank, or uh, like the currency exchange that I went to at the airport, I exchanged just a tiny bit of money, just so that I had a little bit of cash when I left the airport. And uh, that currency exchange rate was like, I want to say it was like three, right around 350 pesos for one uh, US dollar. So that's the official official government rate, but that that is not the the actual the rate. The rate that's the actual rate, the market driven uh, exchange rate, is called the blue dollar rate, dollar blue. And that one, I think today I didn't check today, but it's somewhere around 900, 950 pesos per dollar so it, it, you get a lot more pesos exchanging at the blue dollar rate and the blue dollar rate is technically technically a black market exchange rate but I mean it's like it's so 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 normalized here that even if like Western Union if I wire myself money from a US bank account to Western Union and I pick it up here in pesos they give me the blue dollar rate so why are there two exchange rates? That's interesting. What happens is there's an extreme shortage of, uh, of dollars and other foreign exchange here in Argentina. Dollars, euros, um, things like that. And because of that, people are like desperate, desperate to get dollars. And the reason is because the inflation of the peso is so bad that if you get paid in pesos, you can't really save money in pesos because like a year from now with 130% inflation, your, your savings is going to be worth less than half of what it was. So there's really no reason to, to save money in pesos because you're just constantly losing money. Uh, a friend of mine says, you know, you get paid at the beginning of the month, you get a giant stack of pesos and you feel rich for just a moment, but then you realize that you're actually just getting poorer and poorer by the minute which is terrible, uh, but people want dollars. And they want to save money in dollars. So there, there's, a, there's a big shortage of, uh, of dollars in the country, foreign exchange shortage, and because of that, there is a much higher exchange rate if you're exchanging dollars on the black market or the blue dollar market, okay? So interestingly, the government exchange rate, the reason why they've kept the official dollar rate um, so low is basically because in addition to the inflation uh, crisis here in Argentina, they are also in a massive debt crisis. Um, the, the poor soybean harvest, in addition to the uh, in addition to the uh, coronavirus like they had to print a lot of money in order to uh, to keep social services going that contributed to inflation but they also took a uh, a loan from the IMF 44 billion dollars if I remember correctly and that 44 billion dollars like that loan it's in US dollars so if they keep the exchange rate where it is then 
you know, that that's that's how much they have to pay back, 44 billion times 350 or whatever the government exchange rate is. If the government were to recognize the blue dollar rate as the official government rate, the amount of debt that they took on would more than double like overnight, basically. They would have the $44 billion debt. They would change the exchange rate to like, uh, you know, 900 or 950 or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, they, they would owe like $100 billion. And they don't even have enough foreign exchange to be able to pay back the, uh, the $44 billion. So there's no way they'd be able to pay back the $100 billion. And in order to pay back, um, or in order to, uh, to get another loan from the IMF, the IMF uh, wanted to wants like a certain um, I guess like assurances that they're trying that they're dealing with political corruption problems here in Argentina, and they're not going to loan them any more money uh, unless they can prove that they are doing things to address political corruption. So uh, that's that's basically it. That's the blue dollar rate, and what's what's really. Um, like interesting is the blue dollar rate fluctuates um, up and down. I mean, largely, if you look at the general trend over the last few years, it's just been going up and up, but it fluctuates up and down a little bit, sort of day by day, week by week. Um, and you can actually check it. Um, it, it. It's basically because it's like the, the worst kept secret. You can go on like websites of major national um, uh, like publications, newspapers, La, La Nacion is one of them, and that's like a state-sponsored, state-subsidized uh, news uh, organization, and they report the blue dollar rate. So it's like everybody is exchanging at that blue dollar rate, including like police, including um, government officials. Like everybody is exchanging at that rate. So if you have like a certain amount of dollars, but you need pesos in order to, uh, you know, buy groceries or whatever, you can just take out a small amount of dollars, exchange it for pesos, and that's what people are doing here. And then the reverse, people are buying dollars in order to, to save money so that their long-term savings doesn't devalue um, along with the peso. So it's a, it's a kind of a crazy situation, um, but as I was walking through here, you might have heard people saying, cambio, cambio, cambio. And they're saying that because they're trying to get people who want to exchange uh, want to exchange money. So I actually did this on like the first day I was here. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect, but basically I just walked up to the first dude who was saying cambio, cambio. I asked him in Spanish what the, the price was, uh, the exchange rate, and he told me. He told me it was 910 and uh, asked me how much I wanted to exchange. I told him CN, $100. And uh, yeah, he just led me into like a business. Well, I'm not gonna say which business it was, but we walked into a business and uh, right inside that building, there was like a little tiny office. It was basically just a desk and a couple of chairs and a dude with a money counting machine. I put my $100 bill on the, on the table and he, uh, he counted out 91,000 pesos or like 90, 91 uh, 1,000 peso bills and he put it in a rubber band he gave it to me and that was it it was super easy and like it seemed like it was something that was very 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 regular like it's not at all hidden I mean like I said we walked right into a, a business along this really busy shopping street and there was just like a tiny office right there um, and uh, yeah that's how we did it so it's a uh, you know, like I said the worst kept secret in Argentina but it's you know everybody everybody does it and I've heard that like you can um, you know negotiate a little with someone and go talk to a different uh, arbolito they call them the people standing out calling out cambio cambio they call them arbolitos which means little trees because they sort of stand there like a tree and they have green leaves meaning money So it's basically right out in the open, and this is just this is just what how people have adapted um, here in Argentina. You know, I was thinking about this before. I was thinking like, if something like this happened, I mean, in the United States, right? Our you know, uh, inflation hit eight percent, and people started losing their minds. But you know, with the inflation as high as it is here, people are figuring out a way to get by. And you look around, like 
it's not what you would think. There's it's not like Judge Dredd out here. Or it's there's people walking along the shopping street. They're buying stuff. They're eating at cafes. Like people are still just living their lives here, which you know is is something that I find like I don't know. It, it's 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 inspiring because it it's the situation is is really really bad by the numbers but people are figuring out a way to get by and it's um it's definitely not easy it's definitely not easy for people here the the poverty rate is um you know i think like 40 percent of people are under the poverty line and now they do have uh, a good amount of social safety net here so that definitely helps but you know, it's 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 not a good it's not a good situation. But people are still figuring out a way to get by. So we go here up the back street, up behind Cache Florida, and walk back through. Um, but that's uh, that's the dual exchange rate in Argentina. And um, what I was saying was the the exchange rate fluctuates a little bit day to day. And the interesting thing is, it fluctuates uh, based on like uh, developments, political developments, things in the news. So here's an example. Um, the two candidates, Massa and Millet. Uh, Millet is the one with the very radical ideas about the economy. He wants to abolish the central bank, wants to uh, uh, dollarize the economy. And anytime uh, the news is like focusing on Millet. For example, a few months ago, the poll that came out that was a big surprise where he did really well in the poll and people realized like that he could actually be um, a contender in the election. The blue dollar price like skyrocketed up above a thousand pesos per dollar, meaning the peso devalued um, in relationship to the dollar because demand for dollars go went up specifically because the realization that if Millier wins and they dollarize the economy like he says he's going to do, the demand for dollars is going to be really high. So in preparation for that, the price uh, went up. And what was interesting was when I arrived, um, it was after the uh, first round of elections. And the way elections work here is there's a first round with a bunch of uh, hola, buen dia. There's a bunch of um, candidates from different parties. Uh, they all run, and if one candidate is able to get, I believe, 40 percent of the vote, or 45 percent of the vote, and if they are at least 10 points ahead of their nearest uh, like second place candidate, then they win outright. Now, none of the candidates were able to do that, and so that's why we have a ballotage runoff that's happening like right now basically um, and that's the top two candidates Millier and Massa and those two are having a runoff they're having a runoff election um, but what happened was in the first round election the, the polling showed that Millier was going to come out in first and win a plurality uh, but he actually didn't Massa got like 36 percent Millier got 30 percent and immediately the dollar price dropped. So it was up above a thousand. It dropped down to about 850, I think. When I exchanged, um, uh, when I exchanged, like I said, at, in Florida Street, it was like 910. But a few days before that, I had wired myself some money to Western Union. And the price I was getting at that point was 854, I think, per uh, per U.S. dollar. So, like I said, the the price fluctuates depending on what political developments are going on, which makes sense because you know a lot of the political developments they have to do with economics, they have to do with uh, monetary policy, and so if the monetary policy favors a situation where the dollar price is going to go up and demand for dollars is going to be high and the blue dollar rate goes up. And you can track uh, what the blue dollar has been doing and sort of see a recent history of the political situation just in those dollar prices, which is, is really interesting. So we're gonna keep on walking here. I'm gonna head back to the train. 
I think. Um, it's been a good day walking around. We'll head out. And, uh, you know, tomorrow actually is the election, the actual election election. And then the day after is national holiday, the uh, day of uh, national sovereignty. And uh, I'm going to be out checking out the streets, hopefully, for all of those things. Uh, this video is actually going to come out after the election is over because i got to edit everything together. But um, when the video comes out, we'll see. We'll see who is going to be the next president of Argentina. It's either going to be um, uh, Sergio Massa or Javier Mille. And like I said, um, there is a big, big last-minute push. You can tell that, uh, um, like, uh, Massa. Massa is making a big, big push. Like I said, all over the city, everywhere, everywhere. There's just Massa posters everywhere. That guy, his face, I've seen his face more than I've seen my own face in the last few days. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. But it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting no matter what, and it's gonna be a big historic um, election. No matter no matter what happens, it is a major major turning point um, historically for this country. There's no there's no way around it. It just is. It's a really really big deal, and um, we'll see we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is editing me here, uh, and uh, I know the day before the election, I was talking. When we were walking on Cache, Florida, I was talking about how the uh, price, the blue dollar price, uh, uh, swings wildly up and down. And it's a lot of times dependent on different political developments. When Javier Mirier, who wants to dollarize the economy when he seems to be doing well, um, there's a higher demand for dollars because people are expecting that dollars are going to become more valuable. And lo and behold, he won the election. Uh, the day after the election, there was a holiday, so the markets were closed, but they opened up today, and uh, the blue dollar price is at 1,050 pesos, so it went up from about 900 pesos up to about 1,050 pesos uh, because uh, Millier won the election, so you can really see how the, uh, how the price swings based on different political developments. Uh, it was definitely a thing. I would imagine it's actually going to keep going up because he's not actually going to take power for another, I think, like 20 days. Uh, he takes power December 10th. So uh, the, the price will probably continue to go up, especially as he announces um, his plans for the government once he takes over. He, um, I'm sure, is going to be talking about dollarization a lot, and that's going to send the market... Um, you know, crazy. The the price is, is, I think, going to go up. Another thing I, I noticed was uh, the line outside the Western Union today where people uh, receive, um, receive money wire transfers and, and Western Union transfers at the blue dollar rate because the blue dollar rate is so much higher now and it's expected to probably get higher. That line was very, very, very long today. There were about 30 people in the line when I walked past it. At the same time, on a weekday last week when I exchanged money. There were about three people in line, including me. So um, you can tell that everybody is trying to, um, uh, they're trying to buy up dollars right now um, so that, because the price is just gonna keep getting higher. So um, there's, uh, there's a big market for dollars. The, the, the price is, is, is skyrocketing, um, which unfortunately means the peso price is coming down and the inflation on prices of uh, goods like food and, and things like that are also going to skyrocket, which is is, uh, is a pretty bad situation. But it's also something that was expected um, if Millier won because of the speculation that he is going to dollarize the economy and the value of the dollar against the peso is going to dramatically increase.